Hello and welcome to the eighth episode of History Not Taught at School, which is going to be about our world. And I want to begin by talking about the three sovereign city-states that are in the world, which are most powerful. And the first of these is Vatican City there in the heart of Rome, in the centre of Italy, which is a sovereign state which pays no taxes and has its own private guard, the Swiss Guard. And the second of these is the City of London, which also is a sovereign city-state within England, which pays no taxes and has its own private police force, the Metropolitan Police. And this is the financial hub of the British Commonwealth. And the third of these is Washington, D.C. And we can see that Washington, D.C. has been laid out according to Masonic principles with the pentagram and things like that. And we know also that there's a private guard there at Arlington Cemetery. And so these are the three horns that are mentioned in chapter 13 of the book of Revelation. First of all, Rome, and then the two horns that follow it, which are the British Commonwealth and the United States of America. And on top of these horns, which represent the beast of the book of Revelation, is the whore of Babylon, which represents the religions that control the beast, which are the religions of Freemasonry and Gnosticism. The La Fortuna, by the way, transported approximately 217 slaves on each trip. The owner cleared not less than $41,438 from such a trip. These were dollars which the slave dealers could keep and these were dollars of value, which would buy a great deal in return. When one considers that the Jews of Newport owned about 300 slave-transporting ships, active without interruption, docking at Newport, Africa, Charleston, or Virginia, one can approximate the tremendous earnings which made their way to Jewish ship owners. Indeed, the Jews admit that of the 600 ships leaving Newport Harbor into all the world, at least half of them went their way to Africa, and we know what these ships going to Africa were seeking. The fact that Aaron Lopez had control of over more than half of the combined deals of the colonies of Rhode Island with Newport is well known. And so the book of Revelation also describes the moving of human cargo, which is the slave trade. And it also says that all the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn when Babylon falls. And so this represents all the major corporations that have built up in the world today and how they will all fall one day. And we also know that sitting on top of the beast, that is the beast of Rome and London and also America, is this whore of Babylon, which describes all the whore religions that are mentioned in the Bible. And so let's have a look now at the first Masonic lodges in America. In the year 1749, the first Masonic lodge was established. 90% of the members of this first lodge, 14 all told, were Jews. And one knows that only so-called prominent individuals were accepted. Twenty years later, the second Masonic lodge, or King David, was established. It is a fact that all of these members were Jews. In the meantime, the Jewish influence in Newport had reached such proportions that President George Washington decided to pay them a visit. Upon his appearance, both of the Masonic lodges sent an emissary, a Jew named Moses Sisex, to approach the president with a petition in which the Jews of Newport stated, quote, If you will permit the children of Abraham to approach you with a request to tell you that we honor you and feel an alliance, and then, quote, until the present time, the valuable rights of a free citizen have been withheld. However, now we see a new government coming into being, based on the majesty of the people. A government not sanctioning any bigotry nor persecution of the Jew, rather to concede the freedom of thought, which each shares, whatever nation or language, as a part of the great government machine." Unquote. It is necessary at this point to consider the disclosures as to who, in reality, obtained this legendary freedom in America at the founding of the Union. To be sure, the province became independent and severed from the English jurisdiction. However, we can see from the petition which Moses Sisex offered President Washington in the name of the Jews of Newport, that it was not in reality this type of freedom which they had in mind. They were merely concerned about themselves and their, quote, own civil rights, unquote which had been withheld. 
Therefore, following the Revolutionary War, the Jews were accorded equal rights and freed of all restrictions.